Now on our rack one node, we'll discover our SAN storage, which we'll use as ASM disks. Let's log in as root user and start a terminal window. We are going to use iSCSI initiator for uh, using the connecting the SAN storage. So first thing we'll check is if we have iSCSI initiator uh, package loaded. And you can see that we already have iSCSI initiator utilities loaded. We'll check the service status of iSCSI and we can see that it is running. I'm going to stop the service for now because we are going to do some configurations. So first thing we'll do is go to the etc iSCSI folder and here there is a file called initiator name dot iSCSI. We'll modify it and provide a proper IQN number IQN name for this particular machine. So this is the IQN name it will use when it is connecting to the remote servers. We'll look at the initiator name and you can see IQN.rack1 colon oracle is the initiator name for this server. Now we can start the iSCSI service. And we can also check the status of the service, which will show as started or running. We can also use PS minus EF um, to check this, check the service running or not. And we can see iSCSI D is running. The next thing we'll check uh, is the configuration and we'll set it to start automatically. Uh, that is iSCSI on which will start automatically with the server. We'll also set the same thing for iSCSI D daemon to be on. LSCSI is a command to list uh, the iSCSI drives and right now we only see a SDA which is the default server drive. Now we can discover the SAN storage. Uh, we'll connect the connect to the open filer server and it discovered three drives. So if you remember we configured OCR data one and FRA one. Those are now visible to the current server. So once the discovery is done uh, we can check the var folder which will show us all the uh, send targets which are uh, connecting to the open filer server and also we can check the nodes uh, to see what uh, disks will be provided by the remote server as SAN storage. At this time we can restart the service so it will complete the discovery and attaching those remote disks or SAN disks to the current server and if we use lscsi command again it will show now four disks one is the server uh, locally attached disk and three are from open filer which are the SAN storage disks. Now with the session command, uh, iSCSI admin session command, you can see we are opening a TCP connection to uh, the remote server open filer and it has three connections for OCR, FRA and data. Now we'll issue a command, iSCSI admin command and uh, basically this is to set up these OCR, FRA and data drives to automatically 
be discovered and attached at the server reboot automatically. So basically in one word um, we'll be setting it up in such a way that the sand disks will be automatically discovered and mounted on the current server when we restart this server. Right now this is the command for OCR drive. Now we'll also specify this for data1 and also for FRA1. Now we can see uh, the SDB, SDC and SDD are the drives uh, which are provided by OpenFiler which is our SAN storage. Now we can use iSCSI IDM uh, session command uh, with P3 option which will give us the detailed information about uh, the SCSI drives connected to the local server. We'll put the output into a text file and we'll edit the text file. Now this step uh, might not be required but doing this we'll understand uh, which drives are attached as which um, partitions on our uh, local server which devices basically and here reading carefully uh, we can see which SCSI devices are attached locally you can see here uh, the SDB is attached as um, the IQN name is OCR and disk is attached is SDB so these disks are available under slash dev. Now we'll create uh, folders uh, for storing um, Oracle software, uh, grid software and if you notice I'm not following the OFA, Optimal Flexible Architecture. I'm creating some folders, uh, one is Oracle Base, Oracle Inventory, Grid Home and DB Home. I'm not following OFA just for this demo, uh, it is not recommended you must follow the OFA uh, for production servers and this is only for a demo. So we have created four folders DB Home, Grid Home, Oracle Base, Oracle Inventory folders. Now I will set up uh, the right privileges for these folders. I'll give the ownership of uh, uh, Oracle base as uh, grid grid user uh, o install group I will do the same thing for aura inventory same thing for the grid home for db home uh, we will make oracle as the owner o install as the group and uh, this will be db home We'll also set up uh, the correct read-write privileges for these folders.
now we'll check uh, the status of ntpd service ntpd is used as a network time protocol daemon we are not going to use ntpd uh, for our rack because rack itself has a time synchronization component uh, we are not going to use ntp so we are changing the ntp config file here uh, so it doesn't start by mistake current status is stopped anyway also changing the config file will make sure ntp doesn't start with this we have completed the basic setup for uh, rack 1 node we can shut down the rack 1 node now